We will now discuss exercise eight, which is how to use multiple images to explore thresholding options. If you recall from exercise seven, we did this on a single image, but you will typically have more than one image. And so in this exercise, we'll go over how to handle that scenario. Specifically, uh, we will be looking at single plane two channel images. Um, and these are a subset of the data that constituted the paper in collaboration with Jenny Ting, which was three-dimensional data. So as explained in the exercise instructions, uh, I have a macro that will allow you to extract single uh, Z slices from three-dimensional data sets. So if that's something that you're interested in doing, you can read up on the instructions and, and find a way of extracting that data in a defined manner. Um, Specifically, the data set that we're going to use to explore this is called wild type minus DNA time 1 to 40, wild type plus DNA time 41 to 80, channel 2. So let's open this and I'll explain what this is. And in an optional exercise, I will show you how to make this. Um, so you can see that this is uh, a single channel across many, many images. So this is a single channel and it's organized as a time lapse. So this came from 80 individual images. Number one to 40 in this time lapse are the individual images that come from the condition in the paper where there was no DNA added to the experiment. And images 41 to 80 come from the condition in the paper where DNA was added to the experiment, specifically a virus was added. Um, so I've taken all those images uh i've only taken one of the channels and i've done something called concatenation to generate the single time lapse that includes all the images the reason i've done this is that when you have the data in this concatenated format it makes it easier to explore if you have multiple images and are trying to figure out how to threshold them so again i will explain how to make from the original data this kind of concatenated data set in an optional exercise. But now I'm just going to move forward with this data set. Um, there are a few things that you can do with this. You can work either with this concatenated data set where each image is a time point, or you can also make a montage from this where you make a single image where there's a grid of all these images in that one. And so I'm going to do that as well. And I'm going to show you how to use both things uh, to explore thresholding when you have multiple images. So to make a montage, you're going to go to image, stacks, make montage. And one of the things you want to do is make sure that the scale factor is one so that you don't scale down uh, this image. So when it was 0.25, it meant that it would uh, reduce it in scale by a factor of four to 25% of the original. We don't want that. We want the images to look just as they did um, uh, in, in sort of the original data. We don't want any borders. We don't want to label the slices or use the foreground color. So I'm going to say OK. And that creates this, which is there are 80 images here. OK, and each of them are at the original resolution and have the same number of pixels as, as this image. Okay, so this can be useful to see across many images what any given threshold um, uh, looks like. So let's do that explicitly using some of the tools that we learned in exercise seven. Um, so if I look at this here, I can open image adjust threshold and adjust manually and see what the effect is across all images. So this can be really useful if you're going to do a manual adjustment because none of the automatic methods uh, sort of works consistently across all the images. This can be really useful because you will be able to see for a given manual threshold what the thresholded pixels look like across many images. So you're not going to be evaluating just on how it affects one image, but on many at once. So this can be a a very useful tool. Um, you can also use uh, any of these automatic methods on this um, montage image. So for example, you could say, well, show me what Atsu looks like. Excuse me, I'm going to turn this off. Uh, show me what Atsu looks like on this montage of images. So this will show you what would happen if you took 
all of these images and ran Otsu on them, you'd get a value of 37. Note that that's not that different from the 40 value that we used as our manual threshold in the paper. Now this can be risky because Otsu looks, for example, uh, just as one example of threshold, Otsu looks at the histogram and sort of divides it into two classes and finds the value for which you minimize the intra-class variance. And so that will work okay if they have sort of similar intensities across all images. But if you have a population uh, of images or even one image where there are pixels that are much, much brighter, because Atsu is assuming there are two uh, classes, uh, that might drag the threshold out um, um, sort of much higher than it should be. And so whether, you know, like using, trying to find the threshold by by using an automatic method on a montage, it can be convenient, but it can also uh, be completely wrong if you have different populations of intensities. Um, another approach that you can use, I'm just going to reset this, is instead of using the montage image, uh, you can use, um, let me just minimize this a little bit, you can use this concatenated image stack and so you can see what Atsu would look like if you ran it on each individual one. So for example, on this um, uh, image, which is the first one, Atsu gives us a result of 37. If I move to this image, it gives us a result of 29. If I move to this image, it gives us a result of 56. If I move to this image, it gives us a result of 46. And the reason this is varying is that Atsu is looking at the histogram right now of only the image that we have selected. And so this is a another possible approach. You can use the same method on multiple images, individually on each one. And the consistency there is in the fact that you're using the same method, but you may get different thresholds for each of the images. And maybe that is the right approach. So for example, if you have certain cells that are uh, certain uh, images where the intensities are much higher than others, but they are sort of a bimodal distribution, this will work quite well. You can also use Atsu with stack histogram checked. So if you click on stack histogram, Atsu will calculate the proper threshold based on a histogram that includes all of the images in a stack, not just an individual one. And so be careful when you do that because the behavior of the auto button is not quite what one would expect. If you click this, it sort of does some weird calculation. I'm not sure what it's doing. Uh, the, the proper value is, is shown when you click on stack histogram. So you can see it's 34 if I do it on that one. If I unclick it and then click it again, it's always 34 because there's one histogram for the entire stack. And that is the value uh, that Atsu is finding. And so, uh, you know, you can do this for many different thresholding methods and sort of see um, how things look across many images to decide whether you're better off using a manual thresholding technique with all the, the problems that that has, uh, an, uh, an algorithm-based technique when you look at all the data with some of the caveats that that has, or uh, um, an automatic al algorithm but applying it to each individual image such that the thresholds might be different across images. So these are just some ways of exploring them. Um, and so again, the, the reason that, for example, the stack histogram value is different from Atsu calculated on a single one is that they're looking at different pixels. Here, it's only looking at the pixels from this image, whereas if you click stack histogram, it's looking at the pixels from all the images. So let's try uh, a, a different approach to this. I'm going to hit reset here. Um, same data. I'm going to duplicate it, Control Shift D. And then I'm going to use the alternative method to explore thresholds, which is if we go here to Image, Adjust, Auto Threshold, we can say instead of Try All, we can say Atsu white objects on black background, show threshold values in log window, and use stack. What this will do is it will calculate Atsu for each of these images and show me the result. So you can see that what it has done is it has applied Atsu thresholding, and it gives me the values for each of the 80 images here, and it has shown me the mask. So now if we want to, for example, 
look them uh, you know look at them side by side we can do this by syncing up these windows so there's a command called synchronize windows in Fiji um, so which is also I think analyze tools synchronize windows if I synchronize all the windows now if I scroll here it will be on the same uh, plane in this um, uh, sort of time-lapse stack which in our case corresponds to the different images so I can see if I did Otsu on each individual image such that the thresholds are different in each one what would that look like so this is just one way of to conveniently check visually whether this makes uh, th this is giving results that make sense another way that we can do this is um, we already have this image we can compare it to a montage of this one so if I uh, I'm going to unsynchronize the windows in case that breaks something. So I'm going to go here, say images, stack, make montage. And so now I have you know, the raw data and the resulting masks. And I can even put these two together um, to, uh, to, to make a little stack where I can toggle back and forth and see if I think that these masks are a good idea. For this to work, we have to do a few pre-processing things to be able to put these together in that mini stack. So first, uh, it's convenient to rename this. Um, so if I go to image, rename, I'll call it montage mask. This just helps keep us track of uh, which one is which. And then you can see that this is a 16-bit image, whereas this is an 8-bit image. So we need to convert them to be the same kind. Um, otherwise, it won't let us join them. So I'm going to go here and just say image type 16-bit. Once we've done these things, now we can put them together. And so there are different ways, as I said, of doing this. I'll show you one. You can go to image, color, merge channels. And we can put this one on um, a grayscale. So we'll uh, set that up as montage. And then we can have this other channel. Uh, for example, we'll, we can put this on a red scale and call it montage mask. We'll create the composite. We'll keep the source images in case I made a mistake. And so now what we have is a two channel image, which we can use the channels tool to toggle between them. This is the mask channel, and this is the data um, that was used to create that mask. So by toggling back and forth, you can see uh, perhaps more easily whether that thresholding method made sense.